Hello and welcome to The Wave of Things. My name is André Savetier. As you can see, I'm enjoying the first signs of spring. And this makes me think a lot about the last summer, which I spent in Portugal. And I thought, why not make this whole episode about Portugal? Actually, I never planned on going to Portugal. It was Christmas one year ago. M my father said to me, Let's go somewhere where we never have been before. And I said, okay, let's go to Belarus. And he said, no. So we agreed on going to Portugal, namely to Lisbon. Actually, I found out that I quite like the country. I like the culture, I like the people, I like the language. I liked it even so much that I went twice in the same summer there. I saw Lisbon, I saw Sintra, I saw Tumar, the old temple's capital. I was amazed by the old uh, temple castles, by the churches. You know, if there's one thing I like the same as music, or almost the same as music, it's history. It's a beautiful country and all, but it's all about the people. So I thank you very much, Marta, Sofia, Susanna, Harris, for making my time in Portugal to a very unforgettable event. I didn't just learn about the history, of course, I also learned about the music. My friend Marta gave me two albums by the band Radio Macau, and I listen to those albums a lot in my car. They're very precious to me, and this always uh, reminds me of my time in Portugal. Radio Macau were one of the figureheads of the Portuguese New Wave movement, and their singer Shana has a mesmerizing voice and it shows the beauty of the Portuguese language. They only existed for a short time, from 1983 till 1993, but they produced a couple of very nice albums, of which I recommend you the album Spleen from 1986. Another Portuguese band I really enjoy is called Settima Legião, the Seventh Legion. They were founded in 1982 and disbanded in 2003. In the beginning they played some post-punk. It's easy to call them actually the Portuguese Joy Division, but they quickly changed the sound to, to a more poppy one. Talking about Portuguese music, of course we have to mention Fado. Fado is a typical Portuguese musical style. It can be translated like fate. Fado is mostly in minor scales and has Arabian elements mixed in. That means uh, the voice changes in heights a lot. The driving theme of Fado is Saudade. It's a term, I was told it's not easily translated to English, but it means something like longing. So the longing, it's a coastal country, a lot of uh, men went to the sea. One of the most famous Fado singers was Amalia Rodriguez. Today's talk is with Velvet Kills. It's a lovely couple, Susanna and Harris from Lisbon. They recently released their first full length album. It's called Mischievous Urges. And I would say let's go into the talk. with uh, Susanna and Harris from Lisbon, my favorite couple from Portugal. Long time no see. No, not so long, but... Not so long, but it's been a little while, yeah, a couple of months. But a lot of things happened in between, and now I'm re really curious. You released your first album, Mischievous Urges. I would like to know how was the reaction to this album? Tell me some impressions about it. We're happy. Uh, we've been really happy with the feedback we've been getting. Um, got some really nice reviews. Um, also some very honest reviews that we really liked. Yeah, we we're very happy with it. It's, it's actually funny to see the reaction of people and how they, um, they listen to our sound. Uh, we had um, a review from a, a magazine that, no, I don't remember. Um, that was very interesting because... Um, 
in the first impact when people listen to our music, they expect maybe something a little bit more directed for this image that they see of the 80s. And then they start decoding the music and understanding what it is really what the songs are about. And I think it starts to tell a little bit uh, about us as Velvet Kills, um, because we really do think subtly, but the message is in fact very strong and very revolutionary <laughs> somehow. And it's nice to see how people discover these things while they listen to our music and end up uh, getting to this conclusion. Okay, what's so revolutionary about it? Well, for me at least, when I write and I write, for example, about what's happening in society, um, it's, uh, you know, things that we live every day, um, that we can't uh, really do much, we just little tiny ants. So we don't really have the power to make the beat change, but we can still have a voice, and that's uh, what I feel like I do when I'm on stage, I feel like I can have the voice to at least say how pissed off I am about all of this unfairness of the society and somehow to reach more people and to see if uh, we can get some sort of reaction. <laughs> Next month we, we're going to travel a little bit, we're going to Italy that we've never been. Oh, nice. Uh, we have happy to go because um, I think it's good for our music to be places uh, where people live and by themselves with a genre. It's confirmed for now. We're going to be playing with, uh, get to play a show with Ash Code. Oh, nice. And I forget who else. Oh, also, we've been talking with Selfish Shadows. And um, we're hopefully we're going to be able to do a show with them also, with him. Um, you were in Italy, right? But it really seems like the, like the public there really appreciates the music. Uh, yes, I made a documentary about Bologna, you know, the post punk scene there. <laughs> Generally, in Italy, it's quite uh, big. Uh, you've been to Berlin for several months, as you told me. Yeah. Uh, and you didn't stay there because it was too cold for you. Is that right? <laughs> no, that's not the only reason. No, that's not the only reason, no. We didn't stay there, uh, first of all, because when we went there, we actually made a swap house. So we had two months. This was the time that we had predicted to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get back to our uh, our place. So we yeah, uh, we wanted to make the tour on the way back, on the way to go, and then come back and stay there for two months. And so we did it. We were happy to leave at the time because it was getting really cold. We're also really happy being um, based here. We have a, a good environment, a lot of space. Um, you know, we have the freedom to make noise. How, how is it uh, in, in Portugal? How big are the opportunities for this kind of music? So I think it's growing a little bit. But our idea was never to stay here only. So it's good to travel and we'll go everywhere. Well, that's the other great thing. I mean, here we're, it's really convenient for traveling to other places. I mean, we're just, you know, two hours from the UK, two hours from Paris, two hours from, or a little bit more to Berlin. Thank you for this opportunity. Like if I start with you, like online interview. Yes, it's our first uh, interview. It was my yeah. very first Great. online interview, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, Ciao. Well, nice Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> yeah. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you like the show, please spread the word. Thank you very much. <laughs>